How are ya? How's your mother? Welcome to the Max Bang. My name is Max and I like to drink coffee. Max Bang is a half an hour hangout. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Max Bang is a, a half hour hangout where we just sort of do some smooth smooth radio, smooth jazz voice. So grab a cup of coffee, take a seat, and how's your mother? Pretty, pretty hectic week for me, uh, for your old buddy Max. I picked up sort of a, a deal now, or I'm doing a deal with uh, a promotional deal with a do. My job, my job has changed quite quite a bit over the years. Now, one of my, one of the nice. What's nice about what I do is I make videos, I make people laugh, or I try to or make people feel good about themselves, try to teach them something, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes that pays the bills by itself. And sometimes companies come up and they're like, hey, do you want to make a video for us? We'll give you some money. And um, I usually say, yeah, I'd love to, because then that money lets me do the stuff that I want to do for fun. You know what I mean? Uh, so I feel like it's sort of like that. So th- anyway, this week, long story long, I got a, uh, not to spoil anything. I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure how much I can talk about it. In fact, uh, editor Max, go back and bleep out the, the brand name. The one thing I will say is that, um, I never in my life thought that one day I would be a hair model but it's looking like that's what's going to (laughs) happen. What a fucking world. Uh, But yeah, so that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks, I think, and and I can't wait to show you guys that because it's really funny. It's going to be really fun to do, really fun to sort of showcase what's going on. But it was one of those things where, and I have this in my job, and I think it's probably true in a lot of other jobs, um, but I had to sort of, I have a general idea of what I'm doing, a schedule. Obviously I make my own hours. I make my own decisions on what gets prioritized, but that's, that's sort of, um, that's just being a one man show in every job. You have things that you need to get done and a schedule and a due date or whatever. But this week was one of those weeks where this whole, this like relatively big thing, I've been working on it for most of this week. Uh, the whole thing got dropped in my lap and everything had to get pushed back. And so that was real stressful because it's one of those things where like a, just a thing drops and it messes up your whole week and you got to sort of roll with it. Um, and I remember very specifically, cause I've been writing this down, uh, Monday, Monday was one of those days where I had to push everything back or, um, solve a million problems that came up and it felt like, you know, when those old cartoons, when the guy's in the submarine underwater and, uh, like one of the, um, bolts pops out because of the water pressure and water starts streaming in. So he puts it, he plugs the hole with his finger and then another one pops out over here. So he plugs that one with his finger and then a third one plops and he plugs that one with his toe. Um, and then they sort of just keep going. He plugs one with his elbow and, uh, I call those like days where you're just like plugging holes. Essentially. I know that's like, that's what she said, obviously, but it's, <laughs> it's like one of those ones where you're just, you're solving problems that arise. You're not advancing in any way. You're, uh, you're playing defense. You're not getting anything done. You're preventing problems that arise. Uh, and I, hate those days quite a bit. I think that's, it's exhausting. It's sort of depressing. You're not accomplishing anything. You're just stopping things from harming you, I guess, personally, professionally, whatever. Um, and it really, it really just doesn't feel as rewarding to me. And I think to a lot of people, I will say the one thing that I sort of realized, uh, is that there are people whose entire lives are set up that way. My old job, I worked at a real estate company. I don't even know what you call it anymore. Firm. (laughs) Um, 
but I, I did a bunch of jobs over the years. But at the end of my stay there, my, my job was sort of split into two things. One was I was on a, I was on a, um, uh, I guess a team where we were constructing a building for simplicity's sake. Let's just say like we're building a building from ground up. And then, so that's half my, half my day. And the other half of my day I spend, um, managing an existing building. So, uh, it was, I was basically a landlord for, for, a uh, apartment building. And philosophically, those jobs were complete opposites. You know, the building, you're like, okay, what's the first thing we have to do? You know, get the permits or level the dirt and then like dig a hole for the basement and then like lay the foundation and then like, you know, oh, oh, is the, is the fucking electrical done? Great. And then now we can work on the, now we can, are, are the walls up? Great. Now we can do electrical. Is electrical done? Great. Now we can do the drywall. Is drywall done? Great. Now we can do the flooring, you know? Like it's a, it's a one, then two, then three, A to B to C. Like it's every, and then every time you get done with thing, you get to do the next thing. And then you know that and you get to do the next thing. And then when you're finally done, you get a fucking brand new full building <laughs> and it's great. It's amazing. The other job, my landlord job was 100% reaction, reacting to problems, solving problems. Um, you know, this guy's water pipe burst and now we have to go figure out a way to fix it. Or, uh, <laughs> this neighbor is complaining about this neighbor or this guy just moved in, but he doesn't have any money. He's going to default on the lease or, you know, this guy's fucking, uh, this guy spilled a bunch of paint and now like it's seeping into the apartment below him or we're like, whatever it's 100%. You're not doing anything. You're not accomplishing anything. You're simply, catching shit, I guess. <laughs> and like reacting and solving and helping people. You're helping people, you're solving problems, you're doing it's it's difficult work. They're both e they're both difficult jobs. I mean, I mean these are just sort of examples, but they're both difficult things to do. Completing something from scratch or uh protecting something. <sighs> But for me, the days, and I realized this towards the end, the days that I would spend um, managing problems versus like creating and then executing something in a, like the problem solving days were just unbelievably depressing. I didn't feel like I accomplished anything. I was way more tired. I wasn't excited to go to work. I wasn't excited to do anything. Obviously, like there's problems on both sides, but for me, it's weird. Uh, like the philosophy of it just like sort of killed me. And I always wondered about that. Like if it was just that job or if it was that style of job, like for example, an emergency room doctor, that's similar in that you're just plugging holes. You're preventing things from happening, but you can look at it as like the patient comes in. I need to, solve this puzzle and then I can get him out, get him safe. And that has accomplished something. You know what I mean? The, the jobs where like a mailman, <laughs> I feel so bad for mailman. Shout out to all the U S postal service and Amazon delivery workers and all these guys, you guys are, I don't know how the hell you guys get through your day. But I remember I had a buddy on my wrestling team in college and over the summer, he, you had a summer job. He was a mailman for the summer. <laughs> And so he comes back and he's, we're talking about it. We're just talking shit. And, um, I was like, so mailman, what was that like? And he was like, yeah, man, it was, it was okay. But the mail never stops. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me this look like pure, like terror or like fucking like, sh like, like, like he, he, he'd been through battle, man. You know, like he went to the fucking, he's, he's been to, that was his nom or that was his fucking, uh, that was his Bay of Pigs, or not Bay of Pigs, but that was his fucking, the shores of Normandy. Like it was, <laughs> it was amazing. Cause I, cause you think about it like, okay, like I get an envelope and I can put it in this guy's mailbox. Bam. I accomplished something. But then it's like the mail 
never stops. The look he gave me was insane, incredible and insane and crane. So anyway, long story, incredibly long, but hey, guess what? It's a podcast, so that's kind of the fucking point of these things. Uh, on Monday, so so I would have days where I would accomplish shit on my checklist and move the building forward, and then I would have days where I would just like solve... <sighs> And, and it doesn't, it's, it's a little bit different because they were like pretty fucking mundane problems. Like this one lady hates this other guy because like they went on a date. They live in the same fucking building. They went on a date and now she hates him because uh, they walk past each other in the hallway. And she's like, I think he's going to, you know, attack me. And I'm like, do you think he's going to attack you? Or are you mad because like you had a poor date and now like you're overreacting? He was a creep. We, I ended up kicking him out of the place. I got, I went with her to court, got him a restraining order, kicked him out of the place. He was a fucking weirdo. He was, she was right. Ah, he was wrong. He had this, he had this um, apartment right near the, uh, or a condo right near the walkway. It was a cool building. The parking lot had like a, like a, a walkway bridge. It was like a moat almost because there was an underneath thing. And so you walk, you park, you walk across the bridge into the lobby. And he had the the unit right next to the lobby, and he had this this had floor to ceiling windows. It was beautiful apartments, and he would walk around naked all the time and like freak people out because he's like a you know he's like an old man, he's like a like a dirty old man. And so uh, people complained about him, and then I had to, I had to make <laughs> I had to call him up. Now, mind you, I'm doing this. I'm 25. I don't fucking know. Like I'm you know. I'm doing this job where I'm like scolding what I thought were mature adults. Little did I know that that phrase has, holds little to no meaning at this. I, I didn't know that at the time. So I had to call him up and be like, Hey man, are you walking around with your fucking junk hanging out in front of the, uh, like floor to ceiling window right in front of the walkway. So everyone walking past can see your disgusting naked body. And he was like, no, never. I wear flesh colored gym shorts all the time and nothing else, but now I'm never naked. And so then I was like, what in the fuck dude? <laughs> God, it was such a fucking creep. I can't believe I forgot about this guy. This guy, this is one of the other things that was like blows my fucking mind about this. And this is something that's nice. If you're ever like feeling real terrible, there was a period of a couple of months where this guy was my biggest problem in my entire life. Dealing with him, getting a restraining order against him, getting out of the fucking building, getting him to pay his back rent, like all this fucking shit. Uh, and now I like completely forgot about him until I'm telling you a funny story about how he used to walk around with his old, like disgusting dick hanging out. Balls. I never saw it personally. But I was looking. I mean, I, you know, if I, because I wanted to, because if I could see his dick hanging out, then I could be like, hey, look, I fucking saw it, buddy. Like, don't lie to me. Anyway, he told me he had flesh colored shorts. I mean, fucking brilliant. Uh, you know, like, talk about a comeback that I'm like, ah, well, there's nothing I can fucking do about that. And so I kept calling him and be like, hey, I don't want to say his real name. Let's just pretend like his name is, let's call him Mike. Cause that was his real name. Uh, Hey Mike. Um, how about you fucking <laughs> put some fucking clothes on or don't walk in front of the thing, the window naked when people are walking into the building, you fucking weird old fuck. I'm getting so, I'm getting so fucking Boston right now. So anyway, we couldn't get him to do it. He wouldn't do it. So one day, me and the uh, uh, the construction guy figured out that he wasn't home, busted into his place. I'm well, not busted in. We had keys to the building, obviously, and just installed curtains, blinds that he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> we just installed blinds, and that was it. Problem solved. Yeah, you know, for the for the that problem was solved. Eventually I had to kick him out of the place. He was, he was a fucking weirdo and he, rem but he reminded me of like a lot of my old, it's kind of hard to describe. There's like an older sort of generation of Boston people that I, I knew or was around when I was a very little kid and they were all like pretty shady for one reason or another. Either they 
I'm pretty sure were mobbed up or they were doing weird import exports. They were like importing carpets or whatever. Like what the fuck does that mean? Um, I, I don't know. I just felt like I dealt with a lot of shady characters. Anyway, that was my, that job was incredible. And uh, you know, if you want to hear more jobs about be, me being a weirdo landlord, land boy, <laughs> let me know in the comments below this week. We're drinking uh, an Americano, not to brag. Uh, it's actually not a brag because it's not that delicious. It's actually not very good at all. Uh, it's called, it's a, I, I've been told it's called Mexican coffee, although I think that's, it's an espresso, so I don't really know. Um, it's called La Llave. And the only time I've ever, maybe it's Cuban, Cuban coffee, Cuban espresso. I don't know. The only time I heard about it was my friend, um, whose name, whose YouTube name is Cuban guy. Shout out to Cuban guy. It's an amazing channel. Go check it out. Q B A N. He had me in a video and it was like, it was like uh, white people don't get Latino people. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that was the whole video and spoilers. I was the white guy. Um, Anyway, he, he had this coffee in the video and in the video, like I, the white guy, I'm like, Oh, what's this coffee? Is this, is this good? And he's like, try it, man. It's a little strong. And then I try it. And then my hair's on fire. That's the joke. It's hilarious. I'm terrible in the video. <laughs> uh, so then I saw Anyway. So now when I see it, I think of Cuban guy, I, think, I always text them pictures of the coffee and I'm sure he's like, yeah, dude, that video was 11 years ago. Just like shut the fuck up, but good to hear from you. <laughs> Um, but I think it's like a very strong coffee. The problem is it's just kind of bitter. It's not my favorite, but bought the can, you know, working through it. Unfortunately, that's all, that's all you really can do. I have, that is a good habit that I've gotten into, um, is when I think of someone or I remember someone, I text them immediately, um, something picture of a can of coffee or, you know, a picture of my dog or, Hey man, what's up? Just checking in. You know, it, for a while I was like embarrassed about it. Cause I was like, who does that? It's kind of weird. And then I was like, no man, I, I do that. I like doing that. I like keeping up with people. And I like, uh, I like reaching out to the people that have been in my life and telling them that I appreciate them and saying that like, I'm happy that, you know, maybe we don't hang out that much now you know, maybe you move to a different part of the world. I don't know. Life happens, man. Like that's, that's just how it goes, but you can still be happy that you spent that month, semester, year, whatever with that person. And that they sort of, uh, not even that they shaped you, but that you just like, you're happy. Like you met them and interacted with them a little bit and you have a happy memory from it. I think that's a nice thing. And that's, uh, uh, excuse me. And that's a good thing. And, and I'm tired of being embarrassed by, or I, I'm no longer in the business of being embarrassed by stuff that I think are, <laughs> I think are the things that I think are good. Um, let's get to, Oh, uh, one thing I did want to mention was please wear a fucking mask. Uh, it is not a political issue. It is not, you're not being oppressed. I went down a real bad rabbit hole of watching, um, I don't even know what you call them, like open forums or whatever, where the citizens can come in and like yell at their elected officials. And there was, I think, a video in Florida where these fucking Looney Tunes came up and just started ripping into them about how they're oppressed and how they're going to suffocate from CO2 and how like it's, um, you know, their, their mouths shouldn't be covered or, you know, whatever. It's like, just, it's a fucking mask, dude. It's not a political issue. It will absolutely scientifically st help to slow down virus or, or, uh, germ particles from spreading, you know, the argument, one argument against it that I see all the time is the mask doesn't stop you from getting it. No shit, dude, but it stops you from spreading it. And so if we all wear the mask, we all stop spreading it. And so you don't get it. You fucking asshole. Please wear a mask. It's not 
a big deal. It's not a political issue and just, it's a health issue. And what you're doing is if, if you were only putting yourself in danger, go ahead, fucking kill yourself out of stupidity. I don't give a fuck at this point. Like I'm so, what I'm sick and tired of is people being stupid and then other people paying the price for it because they're trying to help. That drives me crazy. So please, please wear a mask. Specifically, I'm talking about doctors and nurses and ambulance workers and med- medical workers and anybody that is in a position where they have to work or their their job is to help you out of the goodness of their heart and you're just being a fucking asshole. It's like someone, it's like you go into the hospital because you broke your leg and as you're sewing up your, the, your leg, you like slit your arm open so you start bleeding again. Oh, and by the way, you stab the guy in the neck who's trying to like set your splint on your leg. That was a, not a great analogy. I, I don't give a fuck. Wear a mask. Oh, um, one thing that I thought was kind of interesting, the first Max Bang video I put up two weeks ago, um, 500 views, five, whatever. Last week's video, 50 views. <sighs> Honestly, I think it's because YouTube squashes it or doesn't. So if you're watching this channel, please, please, please subscribe to the video and do the bell notifications on it. Otherwise, I'm putting up a video every Saturday, 10 o'clock from now on. Just fuck it. Let's get a couple of comments from last week. Um, Jerick, I moved in with my fiance. She need, house needs a bit of work, but it's exciting. <sighs> congratulations. That's amazing. Also, congratulations on the wedding. Hope you're getting psyched for your first dance. Hope you're getting, um, let's see. What is the most important part of a wedding? The dancing, obviously. Band or DJ is a big one. The drinks. And I think the speeches. I watched, oh my God, I went down a real fucking sappy ass rabbit hole. And I found this one video. It's called um, Bride and Groom Sing Disney Songs About Their groomsmen and bridesmaids and stuff and i'm like what is this but you know what whatever it was midnight i was drunk i watched it it was beautiful (laughs) it was so fucking cute they like covered all these disney songs they replaced all the lyrics with like meaningful shit they sang about their friends and they sang about each other and they sang about the parents and (sighs) i loved it i absolutely loved it so if you're in a if you're in a real rabbit hole go through that uh i've been to a couple weddings about half of my friends are married uh, which is, which feels about right. I'm not, uh, but about half of my friends are, and I've been in a couple. I gave a speech, a toast at one of them and I did. Okay. Believe it or not, for someone that does public or excuse me, for someone that does video production, video content or whatever. I don't find to be myself to be a very good public speaker. I meant to mention this last couple of videos, two videos ago, is that public speaking is, I think the number one fear of every person. And every person's number one fear is public speaking. Number two is death. Crazy, crazy statistic. I don't know, if, whatever, look it up. I don't find that I'm a very good one, even though I do public-ish, or, or in theory, I'm a performer. Um, so I was a little nervous, which was nice. Nerves are great. It's nice to be nervous at least once, once a day. You should try to be nervous at least once a day, but I did okay. Mm, Good, not great. Uh, I, I, it is one of my bigger regrets that I didn't do a better job, but it's hard and you have to think of something you want to say. It's got to be clean because you got to say in front of your dirty ass friends and your, (laughs) the bride and groom's grandparents and their little kids. Uh, it's gotta be insightful. It's gotta be sh- entertaining. It's gotta be funny. It's gotta be short and it's gotta be fun for you to do. I mean, that's a big part of it. What I, what I said in the speech and what I tried to say, what I tried to say that I don't think translated really well, but what I tried to say was, uh, and this is the wedding of my very, very best friend. I've known him since fucking kindergarten, best friends in grade school, best friends in high school, best friends in college, best friends in LA, LA probably the coolest guy I know, the greatest guy I know, nicest, funniest, strongest, most talented. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Tall, he's 6'4". He, um, I meant to say that being around him 
gave you gave me a sense of feeling like I was at home because he's so he's nice to be around he's funny he's warm he's comforting it's just it feels like you're at home uh, and for a long time I thought that was just me because I had known him my whole life uh, and his you know I would go over his house for like week Weekends, weeks at a time. <laughs> but what I realized was everybody felt that way about him. And I think, or at least I hoped, what he found with his wife, now wife, seeing them together, it felt like he was feeling that with her. That's what I was hoping to convey. I don't really think it came across. I was just I was just really nervous. Because I was really happy for him. I really I wanted to do a good job and I wanted to express that to people, but that's sort of a tricky thing to say. And I also opened with a really fucking terrible story about how one time we got drunk and I locked him out of his, <laughs> we got really, we were in, we went to this bar. It was all you can drink bar nightmare. Um, at the end of the night, $20, all you can drink fucking nightmare. At the end of the night, they were like, all right, we're closed. Here's a bottle of champagne for the road. It's like, just, just, you know, that, nail me into the coffin and just light the coffin on fire. Why don't you? So we're walking home. It's me, him and his girlfriend and I'm staying at his place and girlfriend's staying at her place. And he's like, I'm going to walk her home. You're, you're good. Crash on my couch. I'll either stay there, but I probably have to come back because she's leaving first thing in the morning or some, some reason he had to go back to his place. So I go home and I'm like, oh, or go to his house. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to fucking fall asleep. I'm not going to wake up. So I turn the TV on and I blast it. So I'll like super loud. I'll stay awake. And then I immediately fall asleep. Poor, bu- <laughs> my poor buddy comes home, sees me through the window, starts banging on the door. I'm just like, oh, and, uh, you know, he tries to climb the, tries to climb the fence it is he's on like the third story or whatever he tries to get a ladder he just scale the wall he's just banging on the fucking door eventually um his landlord calls him who lives like two buildings over and is like is that fucking you and he's like yeah uh and he's like well shut the fuck up and the more my, my and then my buddy's like well now that i got you on the phone can i borrow the spare key <laughs> Yeah, and the guy's like, yeah, sure, I'll be over in five minutes. Because, you know, because he likes my buddy so much. My buddy's such a nice guy. Shows up. I wake up the next morning. I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? How was your night? And then he's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I am I got, I do have to say that I got an unnerving amount of tweets and DMs and messages and whatever. Um about uh, uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine stopping her YouTube channel. Um, uh, an, an unbelievable amount of you guys still care what I think about her. Uh, and I, first of all, you shouldn't care what I think. Second of all, you shouldn't really you know, even if I had something to say that was fucking 10 years ago, that last time I talked to her was 15 years ago. Um, I really don't want to sit. I, I don't I, So any, so yeah, I don't know what she's going through. And frankly, in my situation, I don't have anything to say about it. I don't have anything nice to say about it at all. So I'm just going to shut the fuck up. The one thing I will say is that people are always going through stuff that you don't even know about. Uh, and so, and including you, you're going through stuff that other people aren't, aren't aware of and your struggles. Nobody knows all of your struggles except for you. And so it's just, just, you know, if, if you're struggling on a daily basis, hang, stick with it talk to somebody, see if you can vent to somebody and then think about how other people are also struggling on a daily basis about stuff that you probably don't know about. So I don't know what she's going through and, but I know what I went through and I don't have anything to say about anything. Uh, and that's, I think what's going to happen with that. Oh yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to sort of talk to you guys about, and I don't know if, I don't know if this is like secret or not. Um, 
I'm taking a uh, I'm taking a class on writing, starting right after I finish filming this. Actually, uh, yeah, it's a writing course. I've never taken a writing course ever. I've never I've, everything I've done in this comedy, entertainment, internet space, whatever. Um, I've pretty much been self-taught, and so I've decided to fuck it. Why not bite the bullet and take a writing course and see what happens? So, if you've ever taken a course as an adult, I want to hear about it. If you have ever, if you, <laughs> if you have any suggestions for me to write about something, it's uh, I think it's supposed to be relatively funny. If you have funny ideas, let me know in the comments below. It sounds like YouTube's going to be squashing these videos unless you make it a point yourself to watch them. So. 10 a.m. every Saturday from now on or hit the notification bell on uh, this video. But other than that, let's have a great week. Hopefully, uh, congratulations on getting through this week. Crack a beer over the weekend or crack a White Claw, crack a soda water. I don't fuck. And uh, keep banging.